Yeah, it has kind of similarities like uh, the situation it was for me. Um, well, it wasn't really chaos in the Netherlands, but they started slowly to, to take down some big names and stuff like that, of which I was one of. Um, for me, it's it's okay now. The moving was uh, yeah, kind of difficult, takes some time, and, and but okay, it's it's all okay now. I'm very happy that I did it because now I'm emotionally free and I can uh, just focus on playing poker. Um, the big uh, Black Friday, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a temporary thing, but for now it's really shitty. Of course, it's it's so huge because it's such a big market. It hits so many players. It's yeah. I I don't know. It's kind of weird that. And in a world we live in, like with the modern technology and everything we can do, this has to be like the situation. It's yeah, it's a big. I think shoot. it sucks, of course. I mean, it's terrible that you can't play online anymore. Even if you can play online, the tournaments are way smaller. The game just much less players. It sucks for everyone. If you can or if you can't, just I guess now it's time to play live poker all the time. The Black Friday. Yeah, it's. Uh it's very, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a sad thing, of course, in, in general, for especially for, for the American players. Uh, we in Europe, we are not that much affected, of course, so uh, the only thing that affects us is like the, the fields are a little bit smaller in the bigger tour, in the, in the bigger tournaments, but okay, as a player, then maybe it's, it lowers a bit of variance and so, so maybe if, for us Europeans, it's not that bad for but of course for american players it's very sad i think yeah a lot of players then uh, well and they might have to turn into the live circuit but there's, there's of course there's a lot of a uh, lot of live poker available in the, in the usa so it's not that they will be bored i think but of course for online poker in, in general it's it's yeah not not good of course it's uh let, let's hope that that there will be a solution uh, pretty soon so that uh, also the American players can play again back, uh, back online. Um, I think the specific indictments were surprising. However, the U.S. poker market has been relatively unstable due to the UIGEA for some time. Whereas I think contrast that with Europe where they've consistently been at the forefront of legalization or at least being open to... Um, negotiations and discussions about the matter, whereas conversely, surprisingly for having the world's largest economy, the U.S. seems to be playing catch-up <laughs> with much smaller economies, <laughs> which is surprising when you have, um, when a lot of the EU is realizing, I, I don't think they realized before the United States the tax benefits, but they're definitely far ahead of the game in um, structuring, um, in uh, tax structures and all that, much more so than the the U.S. So, and um, I definitely think Europe will be leading the way in poker, and it's rather surprising that a lot of sites seem to be stubborn about wanting to actually realize the poten the growth potential in Europe and also around the rest of the world as well. Even though there is strict um, regulation in Asia, um, it's the big game is moving to Macau. Grand, that's not online, but. Um, but the big game is moving to Macau, so I think I think the U.S. has kind of lost its foothold of being the center for poker. Of course, it's one of the worst things that can happen for poker in the short term, mm -hmm. but in the long run, maybe it's better. You know, you always got to try to look at the positive the, the way of things. You know, and I think maybe uh, because of this, the legislation in the U.S. will speed up, and maybe we'll have uh, a legal system within two years where a uh, site like Party Poker or maybe, um, well, um, let's say Bodog or, or Bwin will have like, um, have like a license to have online poker in America. So that would maybe, maybe be good. But I mean, now in the short term, it's very bad, of course. I mean, the scoop is going on right now on PokerStars without the Americans, so that's really bad. And it's just uh, very hard to, um, to get those big prize pools that we're used to, you know. So it's going to be hard for at least this whole year and after that we'll see what's going to happen because the big time pros will move to Canada, move to Australia and find another place to play but for all the people who just like to play for fun that's going to be a big problem for them and I also think that the World Series of Poker is going to be a lot smaller this year so that's, that's, that's really sad. Yeah, for me it was a good idea but it depends, I don't know what options uh, they have like Canada or, or something it's probably a good idea, I don't know Canada is, is probably Good for them? Yeah, I think so. I'd say so, yeah. I've been in Canada a couple times and it's a nice country, yeah.
I think a lot of people who play online are just going to move. It still just sucks for all those people. I don't want to move anywhere to play small tournaments online. I think that people are going to have to come out and play live tournaments now if they want to win the big money, and they're going to have to face me every day, so it sucks for them. <laughs> I don't think so, no. But, but they're also, they're not grinders. They're, I mean, they're not online grinders, so they, so they don't mind playing, you know, live with each other. Um, they're not going to go to Macau. Can you imagine, a, you know, Amarillo Slim in Macau? Oh, my gosh. That's a movie right there. <laughs>